In this video, you will learn how to configure Spring Security in order to implement authorization. Authorization is to check if a request has the authority to perform what it needs to do. So we'll take a Spring Build application with a couple of APIs and we'll learn how to enable or disable access to APIs depending on who the logged in user is. You can configure Spring Security authorization to do a gazillion different things. But the way to configure authorization, that is how you configure authorization, is basically what I'm gonna teach you here. So you can take this knowledge and you can apply it to any Spring Security app. So let's check it out. All right, so here's the starting point for the code. Imagine we have a basic Spring Boot app with Spring Security dependency added, and you have a couple of users set up in the system. It really doesn't matter if these users are in memory or coming from a database or they're OAuth users or whatever else. All we need is a couple of users with two different roles so that we can configure certain APIs to be accessible by one role and some other APIs to be accessible to another role. The simplest way to set up users for learning purposes is using in-memory authentication. And you can learn how to do this by checking out this card that's showing up over here. Okay, once you've done this, how do you configure authorization? Think of the default behavior of Spring Security. When you add Spring Security dependency to your class path, you immediately see Spring Security automatically authorizing all requests. All of your APIs are accessible only if you log in by entering the user ID and password of the users in the system, no matter where the users are configured. Now what we want to do is enable a bunch of APIs to have different levels of access control. Primarily I'm looking at three APIs. I want the first API to be accessible by everybody, whether they're logged in or not. The second API, I want to be able to be accessed by only authenticated users. So it doesn't matter if they have the role of a user or they have the role of admin, but they need to be authenticated. And I want the third API to be accessible by users who are not only authenticated, but they also should have the role of admin. So if somebody is logged in and they have the role of user, they should not be able to access that third API. So let's implement this, but in order to do this, we first need those APIs in the application. So that's what I'm gonna do first. I'm gonna go to my controller, the home resource, and I'm gonna create a couple of APIs. So I'm gonna create this admin API, and uh, the return is gonna be welcome admin. I'm gonna call this method as admin. And I'm gonna create one more API, which is the user API. I'm gonna call this slash user. And the return is gonna say welcome user. And the method name is user. So what I'm gonna do is enable spring access control to say, okay, the root URL, which is slash, which just says welcome, should be accessible by everybody, even if they haven't logged in. The slash user, should be accessible only by logged in users, that is both user and admin. And then the slash admin needs to be accessible only by who have the role of admin. Now let's say you have to configure this kind of authorization. This is fairly typical of most applications. So we're gonna be addressing a pretty good number of typical use cases here. The way to do this is by using an object of type HTTP security. HTTP security lets you configure what are the paths and what are the access restrictions for those paths. And we will learn how to do that. But before we learn how to configure HTTP security, the question is how do you get hold of this object? How do you get access to this object on which you put your authorization configuration? Well, the answer to that is very similar to how you get hold of the authentication object to configure authentication. That is by using the web security configurer adapter method. So there is this class which you can put that extends web security configurer adapter. And when you extend that class, you get to override some of the methods. These methods are hooks that Spring Security provides for you. So when you implement those overridden methods, you get access to certain key objects. You use this technique to get the authentication manager builder in the last video to configure authentication. Similarly, you can use the same technique to get the HTTP security object in order to configure authorization. I know these names don't exactly match, but this is how you do it. This is how the API is built. All right, so what I'm gonna do is try to 
look at the overridable methods of this web security configurer adapter. These are all the methods that I can override. And here you can see there is a configure method which takes an HTTP security as an argument. This is what we need. So as long as we can override this method, you can write code to configure this instance, which is passed into this method, which is HTTP security. So I'm going to choose this and here is our method. I'm gonna get rid of the super call. And again, very similar to authentication, the way you specify this configuration is by using method chaining. So there is this authorized request method on HTTP, which kind of opens up the chain and you can specify this mapping of path to permission. So I'm gonna use HTTP security dot authorized request to kind of open up that method chaining. And this is where you specify the mapping of path to role. I specify the path by using a method called and matchers. This method lets me configure what the path should be by using and wildcards. You don't wanna be specifying each individual path and mentioning the permissions for each and every path in your app, okay? Because that can get tedious depending on how many APIs you have in your application. That's why you specify path patterns using wildcards. The path pattern is specified using the AND format. For example, the slash star star path basically matches all paths, where star star indicates all paths in the current level and any nested levels below this. Okay, now that I have my path specified and my AND matcher matches all the paths, now what's the role I need to specify for this? I can do this by using the has role method. Here I can specify a role, say a user, and now in this line, I'm asking Spring Security to ensure that all URLs, the slash star star, all URLs need to be accessible only by someone who has the user role. If someone has any other role, they are not able to access pretty much the entire application. I can also specify multiple roles here using another method called has any role. This takes in like a variable number of arguments. So this allows users who have uh, both the user role or the admin role to be able to access all URLs. But any other user with any other role or a non-authenticated user, well, you cannot access any URL. Now, after you've done this and you've set the access rights, you can also specify the type of login that you want Spring Security to do. Here, I end the method chaining by using the AND method, and then I use the form login method to specify that I need a form-based login. There are other login options, of course, but form login is a popular choice. And as you've seen, that's the default configuration. Spring Security automatically configured form login when you added it. Okay, so let's test this out by having this whole application accessible only by an admin user. So I'm gonna say has role of admin, which maps to the ant matcher slash star star. So when I load the application, a user role will not be able to access it. As you can see, the error says forbidden and the status is 403. So what I've done here is basically set the whole application up to be accessible only by somebody who has the admin role. So I'm gonna be trying, I need to try out the second user in my list, which is user foo. But now here's the problem. How do I log this user out to try the other user? We don't have a logout page by any chance, do we? Well, surprise, we actually do have a logout page. Just like we had a login page created by default by Spring Security, uh, the framework has also created a logout endpoint. And you can access that by typing slash logout. And now you see this nice form which asks for confirmation when I click on the button, logs me out. So it brings me back to the login with the session removed. Well, okay, now let's try with the other user, the admin user. And I believe the user that we have for admin role is foo. So I'm gonna try logging in with foo. And now I'm able to open up the page. Now. Let's actually change this code to something that makes more sense. Uh, we wanna do the slash root URL to be accessible by everybody, and then the slash user to be accessible by the user role, and then the slash admin to be accessible by the admin role. 
Now let's start with seeing how you can allow access to a particular URL for everyone. The way to do this is, let's say for the root URL, right? So I'm gonna do a add matcher for the root URL, which is slash. And uh, this is something that you typically allow for static assets, right, in any typical web application. So let's say you have uh, static slash CSS, static JavaScript files. So these are files that you wanna allow irrespective of whether the user is logged in or not. So for these kind of URLs, the way to tell Spring Security to allow any kind of access is by using this method called permit all, right? So this basically lets uh, the user off the hook for any kind of authentication. Uh, the Spring Security basically says, hey, this is free for all, anybody can use this. I'm just gonna remove these uh, static CSS and static JS uh, elements over here. But basically that's how you configure all those uh, public URLs and say dot permit all. But this is kind of not what we want. What we want to do is to allow the user role access to the user URL and the admin role to have access to the admin URL. And the way this is typically done is to go from the most restrictive to the least restrictive in terms of order, right? So the most restrictive URL here is admin because only certain users can access it. So we have the admin URL at the very top and uh, this is how it looks like. Uh, the admin URL is at the very top and it's mapped to the role admin. The user URL is below it because it's slightly less restrictive than admin, but it's still restrictive compared to the other URLs. And the slash user is mapped to the user role. Then it goes to slash, which is permitted for everybody. And then you end the chain and then you do a form login, right? So this is typically how you establish these chains. The reason you do this is because if you put something that's least restrictive at the top. So let's say you had a slash star star and a permit all. If you put it at the very top, it's gonna match all the requests and it's never gonna go to the least restrictive stuff. All right, so now that we've done this, this is what the code looks like to allow these three URLs for different roles. Let's uh, actually verify this. I'm gonna go to localhost 8080. Uh, and of course, I'm gonna have to log out and then um, Let's try with the user role. User role, I'm able to enter slash user, but if I enter admin, it doesn't let me. All right, so I'm gonna log out again. And then uh, I'm going to go to login as foo, who's the admin user. And then I'm going to access slash admin. It works this time. But now here's the problem. Slash user does not work because Spring Security doesn't really know that admin is of a higher role than user, right? It's just two strings as far as Spring Security is concerned. So what you need to do is set up the higher privilege of admin based on what kind of configuration, what kind of roles you give it. So admin needs to be added to the list here for user. So you basically use the other method here has any role that we've seen and then I add the admin role to this particular API as well. So with this, I'm basically telling, hey, Spring Security, if it's a slash user, I'll have both the user role and the admin role. So this is a very brief introduction to how you can use HTTP security to configure uh, different API URLs to be accessible by diff different roles. At any point of time, there is a single user with a single set of roles that's trying to access the application. And Spring Security is gonna look at this map of URL to role to make that decision. Okay, should we allow yes, or should we not allow no? And if it's yes, then it lets you in. If it's no, you get that forbidden error with the 403 status code. Now that we've done the basics of authentication and authorization, it's time to move on to slightly more advanced stuff. There's a lot of magic that's happening here. We're just telling Spring Security what to do, and then it somehow does it. The question is, how does it do it? If you were to do some advanced development with Spring Security, it's very important that you understand how Spring Security works under the hood. Check out this video where I explain exactly what's going on when Spring Security starts with your Spring Boot application. I'll see you there.